Welcome everybody as you uh, start to uh, to filter through. Good afternoon from uh, from sunny London. We'll be getting started in just a moment. Okay, we'll give it about another 60 seconds and then we will be getting kicked off. Thank you to everybody that has already joined. Okay, we will go ahead and get started. So, uh, good uh, afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Kieran O'Driscoll, and I'm one of the uh, strategic solutions engineers here at Smartsheet. My job is really centered around uncovering the kind of challenges and pain points of a customer that I work with, and then demonstrating the art of the possible within our Smartsheet platform. Prior to joining Smartsheet, I worked across a variety of project portfolio and PMO related roles within both the advertising and technology industries. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to go uh, through the entirety of this slide, but it's included because this presentation may contain forward-looking statements, confidential information, and or third-party trademarks. But uh, for now, what we'll do is we will carry on. And we'll just have a quick run-through of our uh, our agenda today. We've got about 28 minutes to cover the, uh, the four topics on slide. We're going to go through some PPM challenges. We're going to uh, look at what uh, modern PPM by Smartsheet is. We're then going to jump into a live environment and go through the art of the possible. And then I'm going to touch on professional services as uh, as well. Any questions that may pop up during today's session, please pop those in the uh, in the Q&A functionality. Uh, and Erin and myself will compile a list of responses and circulate to all attendees uh, towards the end of uh, of this week. Now, I just wanted to flash this up on uh, on screen because I'm aware we've got a number of uh, PMs on uh, on today's webinar and, and, and registered for today's session. So I wanted to see how this graphic resonates with you. As a former project manager, I often find myself firmly in the middle of the uh, of the chaos, trying to make sense of uh, data may be being spread uh, among disparate systems, uh, creating or updating status reports from potentially stale or out of date information checking versions and pulling information from multiple sources, manually adding it into a PowerPoint deck. We all know an executive who likes to uh, present in a PowerPoint deck. And then finally sending it via email and hoping with fingers firmly crossed that the data that I've just supplied to my leadership team or to my executive is current and up to date. Now, Across the industry, across the customers that we work with here at Smartsheet, we typically come across some of these PM, uh, PPM challenges that we're about to kind of go through. And we're not the only organization that suffers with some of these challenges and meets with customers on these challenges. But I want to go through a couple of really stark, uh, notable mentions here from, uh, from some of the data that's out there through some of the kind of industrial research companies that we work with, uh, whether that be Gartner, Forrester, et cetera. 95% of organizations that we talk to and, and, and often we work with lack a complete portfolio view of projects across their enterprise. With many projects running simultaneously, customers are struggling to have that full visibility across all of those projects. And lack of visibility is really present, preventing business leaders from evaluating where things stand at any given point in time, and of course, make corrections if needed. It's slowing down decision-making as there's no clear view of the progress being made and the issues at hand. One of the biggest challenges facing organizations is their ability to identify if all of the projects that they're working on are aligned to the overall strategic objectives. According to a Gartner's ex execution gap survey, 58% 
of organizations lack the necessary tools to ensure that the projects they are working on are aligned to business strategy. So they and their teams end up spending time, effort, and resources on the wrong projects for months. This points to the need for doing project prioritization at a very early stage, and it's something we're gonna to touch upon in the live demonstration portion of today's webinar. The survey then goes on to say that only 11% of organizations were satisfied with the level of transparency that their resource management tools were providing, which means a majority of organizations are struggling with questions coming to them on staffing, availability of skills, and if the right people with the right skills are working on the right projects. Clearly, there is a lot of frustration and gaps in the existing approaches to managing multiple projects while maintaining control over time, resources and budgets, and ensuring that they all contribute to bigger corporate goals. In a recent PMI survey, 70% of, in, of organizations indicated that they're willing to break the mold of a legacy PPM tool and try newer, modern approaches to solve their own very unique problem. And this is typically the types of conversations that we are having with customers. The customers that I talk to on a regular basis are looking for four really key elements. The first being flexibility. They need a solution that accommodate, accommodates the way they work, their people, their processes, and their unique use cases. Inflexible PPM tools that are too top-down or too monolithic and very prescriptive set out certain ways of doing things. And so users need to be trained to change their processes and behaviors to accommodate that tool, which can sometimes become very challenging as organizations would have to invest heavily in change management, training, and sometimes even re-engineering their own processes. This typically results in low usage of a PPM tool itself and often leads to wasted investment. Many of the traditional PPM tools also don't do a great job of driving visibility across the portfolio, especially when teams are using a mix of methodologies, processes, and tools. Without full visibility, portfolio tracking and governance becomes practically impossible. Customers are really looking for that single source of the truth to rely on that looks across all projects and not just in isolation. As we just heard in the previous slide, resource management continually comes up with the customers that we work with. Being able to collect accurate resource data to ensure that we're allocating the right people to projects at the right time and planning for capacity across portfolios. It's really difficult when that data sits within disparate systems and within siloed solutions. And finally, those three elements really come together to provide what customers are asking for us on a regular basis is that portfolio reporting, being able to communicate benefits to all stakeholders, from business leaders to individual contributors. Business leaders being able to communicate their strategic objectives across the organization, and individual contributors and end users being able to supply information on progress up to those individuals to aid decision making. So with that in mind, I want to take a moment or two now to talk about modern PPM by Smartsheet. In a moment or two, I will take you through our platform. But before I do, I just want to take you through these six domains that we have on screen today. Throughout these next six domains, we will be able to follow a new request or idea or project through its entire life cycle from strategic planning through demand intake, portfolio prioritization, and project sourcing and planning, right through to the project and work execution being done by those individual contributors and up to portfolio reporting. And we'll touch on what each of those means as we go through the environment. I just wanna take a moment to distinguish the primary difference between what we see here at Smartsheet between portfolio reporting on the right-hand side of the screen and strategic planning on the left. Portfolio reporting is intended to be very much the real-time view of portfolio health. Think about a daily or a weekly view to aid decision-making, whereas strategic planning is going to be something that's done on a quarterly or annual basis and, in as, and is an assessment of how balanced the portfolio is against an organization's strategic objectives. As well as our six domains, integrations between Smartsheet and the likes of Slack and Microsoft Teams and other third-party providers 
will complement your existing tech stack by connecting at scale and driving usability. And the value we typically see our customers benefiting from are unified workflows, data aggregation at scale, frictionless change management, and user-driven innovation. Really being able to cement these solutions and these processes in the hands of those that are doing the work. So let's jump into our live environment. And as I said, we will follow the six domains of, uh, of modern PPM by Smartsheet. And we can do so by clicking along this roadmap. And this is all going to be presented within kind of dashboard functionality. So as I click into our strategic planning uh, dashboard here, you can see that our fictional uh, organization, MBF Corp, is running an enterprise PMO. And this particular view is focused on strategic planning. You can see on the left-hand side, our primary initiative for FY23 is to implement a CWM tool. And you can see to the left-hand side, we're using a couple of graphical widgets to start to understand how those projects are contributing to our strategic goals and how those projects are distributed amongst the departments or the business units within our organization. To the right-hand side, we're surfacing a report that demonstrates our objectives and the key results that also contribute to the success of those key results. Now, all of this information is entirely fictitious and we've got a goal health, particularly of red. So as an executive that is responsible for strategic planning, I'm really going to want to be focusing my, my attention on those areas where our goal health has that downward facing arrow. For those things that are pointing green and pointing upwards, that's really where I'm, I'm comfortable that things are on track. And if I need additional information, I can go and ask the individual that may own that particular key result or objective. Okay. Returning to the home icon, we're gonna be coming back through into our demand intake process. Now, this is really where we may be able to gather a request or a new idea from somebody around the business or maybe somebody within the, uh, maybe within the PMO team or within a particular department or, or uh, business unit within the organization. Now, at the top here, we're able to see how all of our demand, how all of our requests are organized by status. And again, in this instance, by portfolio, and we're using the, the typical kind of business units of finance, IT, HR, operations and sales, just to give us an understanding of how equal or how balanced our portfolio may be. To the right hand side, we're also capturing some data around metrics in terms of the average number of days that a request is either a waiting review, is in review, or is taken to be approved. And then down the left-hand side, we're starting to see what a uh, an end user would be able to uh, submit a new request into Smartsheet for, and that would be using one of our core building blocks, a form. You can see down the left-hand side, in a very standardized fashion, we're able to capture key information that relates to the request in question. And this might be information that is required by the uh, steering committee or a governance committee in order to review any new requests that come in, compare them against each other, and make sure that we are working on what we need to be working on. And to the right-hand side, we're able to then see which submissions and requests that I myself have made into the uh, into the steering committee or into the governance committee. You can see there that I've got eight that have been approved. I've got one that may need more information from myself and that might be something that I have to interact with. And then we can see that I also have a couple that are new or under review. This type of approach where we're surfacing information back to the end user is very much going to reduce down that email traffic and is really going to allow us to be able to surface information to those individuals so that they feel empowered and they feel informed on the progress of the requests that they have made. Again, coming back to our home icon, I'm then going to jump into our portfolio prioritization dashboard. And this is really where we're starting to see those requests, those ideas, those concepts really start to be scrutinized and reviewed by maybe that steering committee or that governance committee, or maybe part of the executive leadership. Okay. You can see here, this dashboard is made up of a couple of different widgets this time. We can see that 17 of, of our requests 
are in review currently. We also have a distribution here by priority from low, medium and high. And typically we see organizations that are just starting out on their kind of PMO or PPM journey utilize that low, medium, high. And as they gain more maturity and more comfortability, they might implement some sort of ranking uh, criteria that allows them to prioritize their work in a much more kind of scientific approach. And you can see here some of those uh, pr prioritized projects that we have uh, and how they're distributed by strategic goals. So again, in the, uh, in the demonstration environment here, I've got five strategic goals from broaden awareness through to strategic growth. Okay. And as I come down a little bit further, we can start to see two reports that are surfacing the pipeline that we have and also the active projects that are being worked on. And you can see here, there's a slight difference in some of the information that is being uh, presented on this dashboard. So from a pipeline perspective, really we're starting to look at whether that project has been approved to become a live and kicking project. We're starting to see some of the proposed budgetary information on when those projects would, uh, would like to be planned to start and to end. And then you can see, as I said, for those of us that are part of more kind of mature organizations, where we are presenting uh, ranking criteria that we're then aggregating together and presenting a weighted total. So you can see here, uh, this Dickie Larson project has received a weighted total of 100% and is probably gonna be a candidate that we will take forward into our active uh, project in the near future. And again, this time we're seeing a breakdown by strategic goal. We're looking at maybe the priority and the status of that particular activity. And then most importantly, we're looking at the health of that project to see how that it's progressing. Again, if I'm an executive, if I'm a, a, a managing director, if I'm, if I'm a VP, I really want to be looking at where the reds and the ambers are within these dashboards rather than the, uh, the greens. So for instance, the Ripin Hand and Parisian project that's presented on the dashboard in front of us is definitely going to be somewhere that I'm going to be focusing my time and effort. And I'm probably going to be liaising quite a lot with Devon to understand what's wrong, why is it wrong, and what support then can I lend as an executive to this particular engagement. As we come down a little bit further, again, touching on some of those challenges that we were, were talking through in the first half of this webinar, what does our utilization by discipline look like? And this will start to inform some of the decisions of can we actually take on more work? So uh, I've spoken with PM professionals in the past and PMO managers in the past where they look to uh, adopt a kind of 80-20 principle in terms of 80% being kind of maybe billable or client facing activities. 20% being more on that kind of internal facing work or development work. So you can see here, we've set our target utilizations here towards the right hand side of the screen, but you can see actually the data that we have in our system today is much, much lower than that target utilization. And that is immediately saying to me that I can begin to take on more work and pass that work through the teams to make sure that they achieve as high a utilization as possible, to make the teams feel empowered, and also to make sure that we are utilizing their skill sets effectively. Okay. As we return back to the top of this dashboard, again, just returning home, we're now going to take a look at some of that project sourcing and planning. And just like we did uh, with our resource management data a moment or two ago, we are going to look at how we can start to take on more work. At the moment, we are looking here on this screen at our capacity by discipline. Again, this is looking at all of the project data that is sitting within our resource management platform. And you can see here that we have a series of disciplines set up within our resource management platform to allow us to identify where we can take on more work. And is the more data you put into the system, the more accurate that this data then becomes, the better we then are able to then make some decisions. So for instance, if I have a couple of new projects that are coming in that require some copywriting and development uh, effort, you can see here across the months of September, October, and November, we can definitely start to take on some of that work. If I was coming up towards kind of 80 or 90%, we might not be wanting to add additional work in for maybe September, but maybe we start to communicate to the teams both internally and to any requesting stakeholder that their work will be managed during October. So really able to set some expectations 
with the customers, with our requesters of when their work is going to get done and making sure that we are not burning out our teams and overburdening them with work unnecessarily. And as I said, just coming back down to that second utilization report, again, getting an understanding of what our targets are for utilization and what our actuals are as well. And again, as I said, the more information that we put into the system, the more projects that we load into our solution, the better visibility that then becomes. Okay. So coming back up to our uh, home dashboard, we're then gonna be jumping into uh, our project and work execution piece. Now, typically I like to see this as the most tactical and operational element of, uh, of the six domains. This is where a lot of our kind of project managers and project resource will be spending their time. What we've done here is we've actually stepped into um, the, the project dashboard. And from here, this is built using uh, a number of artifacts, including uh, a sheet uh, for a project plan, a sheet for a budget tracker, and a sheet for a, uh, a risk or an issue tracker. Um, and that is surfacing information up to this project dashboard level, but through some of the building blocks uh, of Smartsheet, including reports and dashboards, and some of the solutions that our professional services team build, we may then look to elevate from a project into a program and up into maybe a portfolio, again, to provide full visibility of everything that is going on. You can see here on the uh, on the top of our uh, project dashboard, we're surfacing the project name, we're surfacing some information around the health, the number of open issues, and the budget variance of this particular engagement. We've been breaking this uh, these projects down into simple and complex within our demonstration environment. And this particular project is a complex one, and it sits within the finance portfolio. I, Kieran O'Driscoll, am the project lead for, for this uh, particular engagement. And the planned end date for this, uh, this engagement is the 13th of November, 2023. As we come down, we can see some uh, information regarding the task performance. And I'm surfacing a timeline here at a pretty high level with some kind of milestones that go through the planning, analysis, design, build and project closure phases. This project, it, this uh, may, be, may have lots more activities and milestones, but again, just for the demonstration environment that we've created today, we're just surfacing those five kind of key milestones. And as we drop down a little bit further, we're able to start to see some information pertaining to the risks and issues that are going on within this particular project. And then also the same information from a budgetary perspective. And we've also included an understanding of some of the meeting minutes that have been gathered as part of this initiative. And this will be a kind of rolling uh, report that will add in meeting minutes each and every time a meeting takes place. Think of this as a one-stop shop for all things related to an individual project. This is where project managers will go to make sure they are on top of the work that they have to manage and making sure that this information is up to date so that it can maybe surface through to that program level and their program manager view, and then maybe up to that executive level view. Again, thinking back to some of the challenges that we recapped at the beginning of today's session, making sure this data is accurate, is up to date, and is not stale, so that if we do need to put it into a PowerPoint presentation at any point, we can do so. But most importantly, we are presenting this information as live, breathing data, okay? So if it says it's green, it's based on the information that is included within the project plan, within the budget tracker, within the risk and issue log, et cetera, okay? If you've ever got any information that is out of date, that's where you need to make sure that your teams are in lockstep. Maybe you're making sure that those teams are updating on a regular cadence, et cetera, because nobody wants that executive perching on the end of their virtual desk any longer to say, hey, what's the latest with this particular engagement, okay? And then finally, coming back uh, up to our roadmap and jumping into our portfolio here. So if you recall, I mentioned we were at that project dashboard level. We've now kind of gone up maybe two levels and we are now seeing an entire report across everything that we're doing. So we're now no longer looking at a single project. We're actually looking at 33 of those projects. We're seeing a breakdown of simple versus complex. Most importantly, we're surfacing some information around four at-risk projects, and maybe we click directly into a report that's surfacing some of that information. We're getting an understanding of 
what's in progress versus complete, and again, how those projects are distributed across those business units, across those departments. And then as we come down a little bit further, we're able to then start to see how those type of projects, the spend of projects, and the health of projects is appearing across those portfolios or those programs or those business units or those departments. Okay. And as we come down to the bottom, we're starting to get an understanding of the schedule of activities. Again, this is grouped by strategic goal, and we're pulling in some project related information that is all being driven by those up to date project dashboards. And then finally, we're able to see a bit of a PPM portfolio reporting calendar that I have shown and displayed using those projects that are in progress and the priority of, of high, low and medium. So again, we can make some changes to this data should we need to, but this is all around surfacing this information to those executives. And just so an executive is aware of the team that is making up this entire uh, department or this PMO, we have a snapshot or a window into our resource management platform that is tracking some of this people related information. Okay. So as we've seen for maybe the last kind of 10 or 12 minutes, we've seen how we've gone from strategically planning our initiatives throughout maybe the year or through the quarter, taking uh, a new request through that demand intake process, tracking it through the life of uh, prioritization, making sure we have the right people to be able to work on it, actually then beginning to execute on that particular activity and then reporting on it so that our executives are informed on the progress uh, on completion of our projects and how the uh, how the PMO and how those portfolios are performing. Okay. Just coming back to our uh, our presentation here, very, very quickly in today's session, I'm going to be touching on our professional services approach. Uh, we do have a professional services uh, team here at Smartsheet. They have uh, a wealth of experience. They've delivered over 17,000 projects uh, globally for us. They are seen as a best-in-class solution advisory. We have a, a customer satisfaction score of 4.7 out of 5, incredibly high. And we work to a proven, proven methodology, which we're going to take a look at in just a moment too. We have experience across key vertical and horizontal industries. And as I say, from an engagement phases and activities, this methodology is, is proven through those kind of 17,000 implementations that we've that we've done. We typically work to four phases where we will plan uh, and we will use your team's kind of current process and pain points to develop a bit of a future state process and solution structure on which we will all align before we move forward. We'll then take that information and we will begin to act on it where we will start to build that smart sheet solution that meets the needs identified during our plan phase and will provide ample opportunities during this time uh, for your teams to provide feedback on development in very much that kind of iterative approach. We'll then move into our optimize phase where we'll ensure that your team feels empowered to own the solution that we have developed in partnership with you. We'll provide valuable knowledge transfer sessions to end users and also to uh, solution administrators. And then during that kind of maintain phase, we will provide solution deployment support to you and your stakeholders. Now, you may be wondering how much time this takes. And typically, an example timeline here is uh, somewhere between kind of uh, 10 and 12 weeks. Uh, and we see that the burden of uh, kind of time, that weekly level of effort is much more at the beginning of the process in those first couple of weeks where we're in that that uh, that plan stage where we were going through kind of discovery sessions and making sure we're signing off on uh, on build package content. And then as we move into our act phase where we're building and iterating on that complete solution, there's a little bit of a, a, a lighter touch from from those teams. And then really we target a go live kind of week eight, week nine, where we give you solution training, some documentation, and we start to kind of close the project out. And as we move towards the end of that period of time, we're very much looking at uh, opportunities for optimization and for, uh, and for handover. Now that concludes our session today on kind of navigating the challenges of, uh, of modern PPM. We do have a couple of other webinars that are coming uh, coming up in the uh, in the next couple of months. In October, we have an opportunity to talk through navigating strategic transformation, one of our key pillars here at Smartsheet, uh, and that's going to be around overcoming some of those challenges for success. And then in November, uh, we'll start to think about how we can unlock collaborative creativity in uh, in uh, in your marketing strategy. So, a uh, couple of uh, notes there for uh, for your diaries, and I hope you can join us. Uh, I hope you've been, uh, enjoyed today's webinar. 
Uh, and on behalf of myself and Smartsheet, I'd like to uh, thank you for your uh, for your time today. Thanks very much.